Welcome to Maga Mavericks Ad Movies, the show where we talk smack about movies. Or we would talk smack about movies if they were actually bad. But, you know, I guess you can't trust the critics you rely on. I guess you can't trust that Rotten Tomato score even when that Rotten Splat is next to a movie title because sometimes they are dead wrong as they were with this movie Kingsman the Golden Circle. The sequel to the 2014 Kingsman the Secret Service film based on the comics by Mark Miller which were probably not good. But these, these films are good, and the first one was critically acclaimed, everyone loved it, and the second one, apparently not so much. It has mixed reception, as evidenced by a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. And after seeing this movie, I do not understand why at all. Do you, we Lord? Yeah, I have absolutely no idea why this is getting such bad reviews. It, this film is amazing. It's great. I, I'm not sure if it's as good as the first one in some ways, but damn, those action scenes, if you if you go into this movie and you come out thinking that nothing was impressive, that was lame, you must have been up your own ass, because this movie had some awesome action. I don't know how you could say that the action in this movie was too over the top after seeing the first movie. Because it's just the same level of over the top. They even make fun of the fact how over the top some of the scenes are. And people are complaining about the pacing, that it was really slowly paced. Yeah, it I is a two and a half hour film, but I felt it went by pretty fast. Like, there's so much meat in here. Like, you have to get everything rolling. Like, setting up the villain, the new villain, the whole stuff with, uh, getting, getting back, uh, what's his face, uh, Harry? Yeah, Harry, yeah, Harry. Harry or uh, Galahad. Like, getting him back in the fray and, like, all his, like, memory stuff. So if they had made this film shorter, I think it would have felt too rushed. I mean, they could have probably shortened up a few things. I do have criticisms of this movie, but... I am really confused at why people are saying this is, like, too over the top. This feels like a cheap version of the first movie that was just focuses on spectacle. I mean, the original film was basically impressive for the spectacle. I mean, yes, there is more of a parody of Bond in the first one that I think is why critics latched onto it. Like, critics latched on to the fact that, hey, there are some very obvious subversions of Bond tropes in that first movie. And in this movie, it's more doing its own thing. Now, it doesn't need to do the Bond tropes and, like, point out it's subverting those anymore. Now it can do its own thing. And I guess now that it's doing its own thing, people are unimpressed with that. They're not a, they don't care about spectacle, these critics. But, you know, even critics that I think I usually agree with, like Brad Jones, did not care for this movie. And a lot of these critics that I have heard opinions of this movie before, you know, criticized it for being so over the top. They thought that the robot dogs were ridiculous. They thought that the statesmen were ridiculous. I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, like... They are over the top, but it's like, okay, how is this any more over the top than the heads exploding like fireworks in the first movie, or you're like, all like the weird over the top scenes with the one girl who has the like literal sword legs. Yeah, I don't know how robot dogs and a guy with a mechanical hand are more over the top than the girl with sword legs. That seems actually <laughs> like a step down in absurdity to me. If you ask me. Yeah, I mean, like, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know how anyone could this, think this movie is more over the top than the first one. When the climax of the first movie are is a bunch of people's heads literally exploding into fireworks. Yeah. President Obama's head literally explodes into fireworks in the first movie. Yeah. I don't understand. A lot of these criticisms. Now, is this movie, like, flawless? <laughs> of course not. I do think it's a little too long. I think that there are very 
are superfluous elements. My biggest criticism is probably the character of Whiskey, whose whole heel face turn at the end felt very forced. It's like, I guess we needed another action scene. But the plot was resolved. And look, yeah. the action scene was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I loved it. But narratively, I thought it was kind of a waste yeah. of time. And also a waste of a interesting character. Yeah. For, like, no reason but to establish that Harry still had some spy instincts left in it. Mm. Well, at least he'll be served well in that meat grinder. Yes. Oh, man. The villain in this movie... She's not as good as Samuel L. Jackson as Valentine, but Julianne Moore's Poppy Adams is still very delightful in how charming and upbeaten she is and, like, her love of 50s culture, like, her base of operations literally being, like, a diner and, like, she has this whole 50s shantytown, like, set up in, like, a remote mountain region in the middle of nowhere called Poppy Land. It's pretty great. I do think that, uh, that I mean, she had a great establishing scene. You know, she's meeting with the, a new agent. She forces him to kill, like, the agent who brought him in and put him into a meat grinder. <laughs> and then he, she forces him to eat a hamburger made out of the guy he killed. I it's was like, what such the Such a great <laughs> villain introduction scene that shows, wow, okay, she is messed up and hardcore and dangerous and yeah, awesome. But... Just like Valentine. But I don't think that she's as charismatic as Valentine, but she was a fun villain all the same. I think yeah. her death was a lot lamer than Valentine's, though. Like, Valentine got his subordinates... Uh, sword leg like stabs through him and then got a really cool closing line and then in this film uh, the villain ODs which is ironic because she's a drug dealer I, I get the irony but it, it's not as satisfying as Valentine's Day the first movie yeah what I really enjoyed was the romantic subplot between Eggsy and Princess Till Till was the girl that he had sex with at the end of the first movie. Anal he, sex. Yeah, the infamous anal sex scene. Um, You know, I just watched the first Kingsman movie like a day before I went to see Golden Circle. And the biggest thing I would heard about that movie before watching it was that anal sex line. And I'm like, when I was watching the movie, I was like, that's it? That, that's... It was kind of like an awkward line delivery, but it wasn't that... Interesting to me. I don't know. Maybe I guess I don't find anal sex that weird. But whatever. Yeah, I I'm surprised you hadn't seen this, like, the first movie before. Like, I just missed it. I wasn't going to movies every week back in 2014 like I'm doing now. Mm. But I really enjoy the first movie, and watching Golden Circle a day later, it felt like a great extension of that first movie. It felt like a sequel that builds on top of it, because we have a returning antagonist established in the first movie in Charlie, the asshole agent who failed the Kingsman training, and had served briefly as a subordinate of Valentine that got knocked out by Eggie at the end of the first movie. He returns in this, and he's like a big threat. They have a great opening car chase scene that really establishes, like, the a great action scene. And also, it ties into the plot because he's, like, the main subordinate of Poppy in this film. Mm. So, he's not, like, a great character, but, like, they build off of him really well mm. in terms of his establishment in the previous movie. I didn't recognize him. Like, it's the same actor, but, like, they really sold him he how he has transformed as a different person from the more like regal upper class yeah. like he was in the first movie. Now he definitely looks like more of a you know gang member like, kind of guy. Like I kind of I honestly for, completely forgot about him like until like we rewatched the like the first movie yesterday. Mm. But like yeah, like he they made him a lot more distinct in this movie. Yeah, I thought. That he was played by a different actor in this movie, but no, it's the same actor. Again, yeah. they did a good job of transforming him into a different person, even though he's, like, 
the same character. Yeah, he has a bit more stubble now. He shaved his hair. It's like he's transformed. He's le- he's not like a snooty rich boy anymore. Yeah, he's gone hardcore. Hardcore. He wasn't wearing a sweater, but he was still pretty hardcore. Yeah. I do love that this movie just builds off of characters and developments made in the first movie. Again, the relationship between Eggsy and Tilde is like a big subplot in this movie. It comes up a lot, and it's a lot of the dramatic tension at the climax of this movie. It's like, will Eggsy get the cure in time to save the love of his life? Mm. And the title, Golden Circle not only reflects the criminal organization, but the wedding ring that he gives to Till at the end of the movie during their wedding. Brilliant! Yeah, that's a really nice touch. It is. And so I really like that subplot. It felt like a real relationship. Like, he even calls her to, like, ask her permission before he <laughs> has sex with someone. And Ultimately, he doesn't have sex with that person because, you know, he's loyal. He's a loyal boyfriend. Yeah, he, he just puts his finger in that vag and then just gets out. Yeah, that's certainly not something you see every day. A camera going through a woman's vagina. Uh, I had heard about this scene before in Monkey Jones's review, but it, it definitely did not prepare me for it, but it was also not as exploitative as I had been that high qual That high-quality CGI vagina. Interior. Yeah. But that was definitely the point in the movie where the audience was most uncomfortable. But I will say that overall, in our theater, the audience was pretty full. The theater was pretty full. And most people seemed to be enjoying the movie for the most part. They were laughing. There was people clapping at the end. So I think audiences are responding to this movie more positively. At least yeah. the audiences that, you know, are in our area. Because this movie is still being shown during many show times. And you at, at our theater, if a movie isn't doing well, they're going to dramatically cut the show times. So the fact that there's still, like, several dozen, a dozen show times during the day definitely means that this movie is performing well over here. There yeah. is a sold-out showing. Yeah, the, the, show, the show times are selling out, or getting still. close to selling out. And this movie was released two weeks ago at the time of this recording, so... That should tell you that this movie is pretty popular with audiences, at least in certain areas. So I think that, you know, even with middling critical reception, it's doing well in the box office. It's going to gross a good bit, and I think that we'll get that third movie, which I hope we do. Yeah, it's it's already broken past breaking even. Mm-hmm. So at the le- at the very least, they're going to make a profit. They might it might not do as well as the first film, but. I think it's still going to do well enough that it's going to justify that third film. Right. Overall, to round off my compliments in this movie, I just thought that you know all the action scenes were really well done, and just all the fun elements were really great. Uh, one thing I want to note is that there's a very obvious Trump analog in this movie, and it just makes me wonder why Matthew Vaughn said, Oh, I, I didn't want to get too political and include, like, uh, Trump in this film. Like, this is the but thing. there's like, an obvious stand-in for Trump in this film. Like, this is the thing, too. It's like, in the first film, it's not like they showed Obama's face. You don't have to they show, did it. Yeah, you don't have to show Trump's face, then. Just have a guy with, like, a really blonde, like, wig. And, like, just show his back the entire time and him being, a, like, a fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah. You... I think that because the president is such a much more active character in this movie, they needed to show his face. So if it was Trump, it would be like, you know, a little too on the nose. And I feel like his subordinate, the one who does the drugs and gets shipped off to like a containment camp where everyone is in cells <laughs> and stacked on top of each other in a football stadium... I think that she was supposed to be an obvious stand-in for Hillary. So, like, the ending of the movie oh, where yeah. she impeaches <laughs> like the she, she president because, yeah. and becomes the new president. She I has, think like, that's the same a, hair as Hillary, yeah, too. Yeah, I think so it's, it's an like, obvious yeah. uh, reference to Trump and Hillary. And uh, the idea is Hillary impeaches Trump and becomes the new president. <laughs> so, oh, that was that was amusing. They didn't, like, explicitly, you know, make those characters name that or look like that, but... It was pretty obvious subtext. 
pretty yeah. obvious illusions that got a kick out of me. The president was hilarious. <laughs> like, because he's like, yeah, I'm going to kill all the druggies. <laughs> Screw them. And he, he makes a fake deal with Poppy. Like, he, Poppy thinks that she, he's going to, like, you know, give into her demands to legalize drugs and then she'll release all the uh, antidotes. But he's like, nah, I'm not going to sign it. Fuck them. Haha, <laughs> that stupid bitch. <laughs> he's just such a over the top asshole. <laughs> but and he's he like, gives like zero shit. He's just like, yeah, we're, we're just gonna let him die. I oh, secretary, you, you're, you're infected. Oh, we're, we're just gonna put you with the rest of them. Have fun. So it's your own fault good. for taking the drugs. So funny. He, again, it's obvious he was supposed to be trying. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. One thing I'm not really sure I enjoyed was the movie's treatment of certain characters. I think it was a real waste to kill off Roxy Lancelot in this yeah, movie. I don't know like, why she was killed off. It seemed like really wasteful. Like yeah. she was like a useful character, but she gets killed off to establish dramatic stakes, I guess. I don't know cuz I think killing JB was enough. JB was like the <laughs> I, just killing off JB was enough to get make me sad for and feel for Eggsy. Like JD, JB and his friend Brandon. You didn't need to kill Roxy. She could have still been in this movie. Like I'm pretty sure he's more broken up about JB dying than Roxy. So it's like I don't know why you bothered killing her off. She could have done stuff. She she could have made a sacrifice later in the movie after doing stuff. I don't know why you kill her off in such a flippant manner. Yeah, she wasn't a bad character. Or at least she wasn't a useless character. Yeah. I also I had a problem with uh, Merlin's death. Like, I had a problem with it in the sense that, you know, I like Merlin as a character a lot. So I was really, you know, disappointed that, oh, they're going to kill him off. But what sells it for me is just this send-off scene. Singing old country home as the guards are closing in on him. And then, like, stepping off just at the right moment so that he gets all of them in the mine's pro- bomb range. Yeah. It's just, that was such a great send-off. It's yeah. That's such a great build-up. It's such a good scene that it sold it for me. And I was like, okay, this is a good way to send off a really good character. I'm fine with this. Yeah, I, I like that part of it. But I just don't like how it was instigated. Well, like, it's just like, uh, Eggs- Eggsy just stepping on the landmine even before they even start the combat. But the landmine thing was set up in several scenes before. Yeah. There's been, there have been several references to the fact that there were landmines. So that's payoff on that, you know? Yeah, definitely. So I, I enjoyed that. I, I thought that was smart. Yeah, I mean, personally, I just think, like, maybe once the combat started and then Eggsy accidentally steps on the landmine, I think I would have, like, been more fine with that. But then there would be no time to, like, do that maneuver of freezing yeah. Eggsy's foot. The whole point is, like, to get rid of the guards mm. so that Eggsy and Harry could break in with, more easily. So right. Merlin did a great role and, like, smart thing to do what he did. Yeah. It's a great sacrifice. Great sacrificial moment. Yeah, the sacrifice itself, I like. Yeah. And the statesmen themselves, I don't know if they were really... See, the most interesting one of them was Whiskey. He was cool with his, like, electric whip and stuff. But the other two, they were kind of forgettable. I mean, I mean, one of them is basically under the poison drugs for most of the film, so... He's out of commission, Tequila. And then the other one, Ginger Ale, you know, she has sort of... She doesn't really have an arc. Like, they establish that, oh, she wants to be an agent, but Whiskey won't let her for some reason. They don't really explain why Whiskey won't let her be an agent. Yeah. At all. Like, he's not working with the president. He's not, like, actively, like, trying to sabotage... You know, the statesman. It's just in this one instance, his his motivations align with that of the president in killing off all the drug users. So, 
I don't understand why he was so against making Ginger Ale an agent. I don't understand, like, that relationship at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. Ginger Ale becomes the new whiskey at the end of the film, which is whatever. I mean, good for her, but, like, she wasn't given that much of an arc. She wasn't that interesting a character. It kind of felt like they wanted to do more with tequila, but tequila just, like, kind of doesn't do much because, like, it turns out, like, he was taking the drugs, and, like... He was whatever. I mean, he had this one fight scene where he fought Exy and Merlin, but then... Yeah. Again, he, that's... After that, he's taken out for most of the movie. Yeah. I think it would have been better if, like, Whiskey was the first one they interacted with. Yeah. Rather than bringing in they, tequila. I mean, the... It, having tequila be subject to the Blue Rash is motivation for the statesman to, like, really get involved, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just think they shouldn't have made Tequila a villain and killed him off. I mean, I think whiskey that... a villain? Whiskey, yeah. Yeah. I I think it was a waste of an interesting character. I don't... <laughs> I'm dead. They could have had, like, that fight scene, maybe, with some other character. They didn't need to have Whiskey, like, betray them and force... Extend the conflict past his expiration date. Wouldn't it have been just much more cool if, like, they killed Poppy with the meat grinder? You know? <laughs> oh, God. That would have been just as entertaining. Oh, God. It would have been just as satisfying as Valentine's Dead in the first movie, I would think. But, you know, I, I guess they didn't want to do anything with Whiskey past this movie. Again, it's, like, a shame. Whiskey's, like, whole role in this movie, I feel is just completely wasted. It's a subplot that really should have been reconsidered because I don't think it's satisfying at all. Like, the character had a lot more potential than what he ultimately was. Yeah. At least his final fight was cool. Yeah, it was a cool fight (laughs) scene, but again, it also felt like a pointless fight scene because the main villain was dead at that point. Yeah. It's just like staying in the movie for another five, ten minutes or whatever. So, again, in that respect, I do think the movie was longer than it needed to be because the central conflict like ends at several times and they just keep extending it like, artificially. You know, honestly, it probably would have made more sense for Whiskey to work for Poppy and then have the Whiskey fight before they like kill Poppy. No, I, I just don't think Whiskey should have been a villain. I think that. Well, no, I'm, I'm not, I, I agree with you, but if they were gonna go with this route, they should have had him actually just working for Poppy, and then have the fight before they kill Poppy. But his motivations makes more sense if he's just doing it for his own interest rather than actually being, being aligned with Poppy or being aligned with the president. Because if he's aligned with Poppy, then why is he killing off Poppy's goons? Again. You know, that wouldn't make any sense. So they did a smart thing by having him, like, not be affiliated with anyone, but just, you know, making sure the druggies die because he has a big prejudice and hatred of drug users for, you know, the fact that two meth heads were responsible for his wife and infant child dying. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where... Yeah. Again, Whiskey just shouldn't have been a villain <laughs> at all. But, again, I think that it was very strange that they destroyed the entire Kingsman organization and everyone died. But, I, I guess it sets up that they might be able to introduce new Kingsmen in the next one. Because, yeah, like, they killed off... Him. If they killed off Merlin and Roxy, which were, admittedly, the only two, other two Kingsmen who were like, important, you know, you need two more characters to replace them at the very least. It seemed like they were pushing Tequila as the new one at the end, because he comes over to England in, like, his fancy, like, top hat and suit. But he comes over with the other statesmen to attend the wedding. It's not like yeah, he's a member true. of the statesmen. So I don't, I wouldn't read that into it. Especially since they're planning to make a statesman spinoff film, or at the very least, Matthew Vaughn is interested in doing that. So I don't think that they'd have, like, the only statesman who we, like, know anything about, like, join the Kingsman. Because then who would be the star of the statesman, though? That's true. 
I was very confused about one thing, and that is Arthur. Like, he's barely in this movie, but in the first movie, Arthur was killed off because he tried to poison Eggsy, but Eggsy switched the teacup, so he drank the poison instead. And then in this movie, there's an Ar- Arthur's back, I guess? That's not Arthur. That's a different character. It's a different Arthur, I guess. It's, it's not even him. Do no, they, even, they call him Arthur. Do they call him Arthur? They call him Arthur. I think that's his code name. Yeah, it's his code name. But they have a new Arthur. And I guess it just, they look too similar, so I was very confused. They didn't really look similar. Like, this guy is a fatter head. <laughs> okay. They just look like old guys. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> he looked different to me. I don't know. I guess he did look old. Uh, I guess, look, look, comparing them side by side, I guess they do look. But at the time, I was, I was confused. Are they this, as to whether they were the same guy? No, it's a different guy. All right. Well, that was one confusing thing. Clear it up then. Yeah. Overall, I just don't understand most of the criticisms of this movie. I mean, I understand a lot of the criticisms of this movie. I don't understand like people really disliking it though. Like well, I, I found it fun. It, it, I, the first. Kingsman was just good, dumb, like, action spy thriller stuff. And this is the same thing. And, like, the, the appeal of these movies to me are the over-the-top action spectacle and fun comedy and characters. And I enjoyed a lot of the humor in this movie. I enjoyed a lot of the action in this movie. So, to me, it's just as fun as the first movie. I don't think it's, like, any dumber. We forgot to talk about Elton John, who was amazing in this oh, movie. Oh, God, Elton yeah, he, John. He, he, he is actually a character. He participates in the fight scenes toward the end. He helps out Harry, like, defeat a robot dog. They, together, they smash it with bowling balls. It's awesome. Yeah. And he even attends the wedding of, of Eggsy and Dild at the end. So it's like, yeah. he's such a great character. He had a great subplot in this Can movie. Can we make out to John the Kingsman? <laughs> Hopefully, maybe. I, I really enjoyed him in this movie. I wasn't expecting him. Because for some reason, I don't know, maybe I blanked the fact that he's in this movie out when I was listening to the other reviews. But uh-huh. it, it was a real treat. I well, enjoyed one, it. One thing I do want to say is, like, the trailers for this movie did a very good job of Hiding, like, any real information about what was going on. Yeah, the only thing that I got from the trailers was the fact that Kingston was destroyed. I didn't realize anything else about the plot. You didn't realize Harry was alive? That that was the big thing everyone took away from the trailer, that Harry's alive. Yeah, I mean, I didn't <laughs> see the first film, so I didn't have any context for that. Yeah, I mean, but from the way they make that turn, it almost makes it seem like Harry's the villain. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it ends, the trailer ends with the scene of Merlin and Exy, like, looking and saying, yeah. my god. When Ex- except Harry. it's framed in such a way that you can think, like, oh, maybe they're, like, have a spy camera in his, like, room or something, and they're, like, watching him. I love how there's such classy music in that trailer too. Yeah. Like it's they're presenting it as it's this really classy Bond film, but it's like this really like uh very modern. I don't want to say trashy, but it's definitely like juvenile in terms of cert- in certain respects uh action film. Yeah. And it's super fun <laughs> with its spectacle and its humor. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I would definitely recommend it if you enjoyed the first one. Yeah. Maybe you won't enjoy it as much as the first one. I definitely think it has more problems than the first one. And it's not as, like, fresh a take, I guess, on the Bond tropes. Because it's not trying to do that again. But it's uh, still a fun, dumb action movie. Yeah. And that's what I wanted, and that's what I got, so... <laughs> I really Go for it. the meat grinders. Go for the meat grinders. Yeah. Honestly, this is one of my favorite films of the year in terms of just overall enjoyment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so don't always believe the critics or Rotten Tomatoes because maybe you'll enjoy the movie better than them. <laughs> maybe they're full of hot air in terms of their criticisms. Yep. 
It's like you have nothing to contribute. <laughs> you, do, you don't have any great zingers to close off any of these, do you? I guess. Why, why do you always pressure me? I want the co-host who is better at conversation. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, like you said, yeah, go go watch this movie. It's great action flick. If you enjoy the first one, you're probably gonna enjoy this. Hopefully, or at least like get you're you're not gonna hate it. It's not like this is like. Thor one or something or like I, the <laughs> Iron Man films. This is this is some good shit. 